well, hello there again, friends and family. You snuck in on me again, didn't you? You saw me uh, getting ready to cook, so you decided to come for a visit. Well, it's been a while since we had you over to dinner. So why don't y'all uh, come on in to the kitchen and let me show you what we're going to be doing today, okay? Got Trixie here with me. So come on over. What's up, y'all? Like I said, so glad to see you back in the old country kitchen again. It has been a while. Now, I was hoping y'all would stop by, sneak in on me. I believe I promised you a cooking video in the next video. And here it is. Now, might be wondering what old Mr. Tom be cooking up this evening. Well, this goes way on back to one of those times when times are really tough little money. It was just going to be me for that Easter holiday. Kids were visiting their mama and I was going to be all alone. Now, I truly love those honey baked hams. Now, I know y'all probably do too. And if you can't go with those because they're awful pretty pricey, you probably go with another type of spiraled ham from Walmart or your grocery store. But the problem with that, especially for us uh, single folk, is, you know, the best you can do is, is get one maybe 10, 12 pounds if you're lucky, but they're normally even more than that. So you're faced with a whole lot of ham that you're either going to have to eat for a week or more, or you're going to be faced with freezing, which I've done. But on this particular Easter, I didn't have the money for either of those options. And when I went at the grocery store, I still wanted ham for Easter. And I saw something that I could afford. And I thought, well, maybe just maybe I can turn it in to a holiday ham too. And that's what I'm going to share with you tonight. I'm going to share with you, poor folk, holiday ham recipe that I made up all those years ago. And I have enjoyed many times since then. And that, that's fairly cheap. You don't got to eat ham for a week and a half or two. And you don't got to put any up in the freezer if you don't want to. Oh, and by the way, make some of the best ham sandwiches or some of those there hot ham and cheese, grilled cheese, you've ever had in your entire life. Trust me that. But like always, you're going to need a few things. So, let me show you what you're going to need, and then we'll get the process started as always. So, come on over here to the counter, okay? So, like always, you're going to need a few things. And I sort of gave the old secret away about what we were going to be making tonight. But let's just start with the ingredients. You're going to need some honey. And, of course, my honey has been sitting up a while. So, it got a little bit hard. So, I had to warm it up some get her back loose and sort of kind of overdid it I think but it'll be okay yep that's raw honey too by the way then you're gonna need some domino brown sugar now I'm gonna be using the light hopefully it's not as hard as a brick too you're gonna need some apple cider vinegar or you can use regular white vinegar it'll be okay some garlic powder right there some ground cinnamon Oh yeah, some ground nutmeg and ground cloves. Like I said, this is a holiday ham. And of course, you're going to be needing some ground black pepper, some yellow prepared mustard, or some of that there fancy Dijon, if you got it. I don't. A stick of butter. That's some uh, good old sweet cream butter from great value of course and then you're going to need a ham and this is where it gets a little bit special remember times were hard I was by myself many of you are like me now here it was Easter and we couldn't afford one of those there honey baked hams or one of them from the grocery store let alone we didn't want to be eating ham for two weeks so this is what I came up with on that fateful day. Voila. 
Yep, there it is. A little bit of ham. And this just happens to be one of those Kentucky Legend brown sugar hams. Yep, it's smoked on up, double smoked, and it's sliced. So my thought was, on that particular fateful day, was it already sliced? Just like spiral sliced ham, of course. They're not sliced all the way through, just down to the bone. So they sort of kind of hold together. I was going to have to get creative on just how to make this one similar. And I'm going to show you just how to do that here once we get all this together. In that pot over on the stove, which I would recommend since we're using honey and sugar, you break out one of them non-stick. It's just me. And you're going to need some type of baking dish. I've got my old glass Pyrex one right there on the stove. And some type of meat thermometer. Of course, since I'm old, I go old school. And you're going to need some type of basting brush. I'm going to go with the old silicone one here. So, this is what it takes to put together a popo single man's ham for the holidays. So, we're going to get that there glaze started, and that, and get on with making the holiday ham. Okay? So, y'all, first thing we got to do is get some fire underneath this pan. Yep. If it'll light. The old gas stove's sort of getting like me. Getting old. There it goes. We're going to set that down to about four right now. And the first thing we're going to do is plop on in that butter. Yep. Let it start to melt. That's important. So we're just going to place it on in there. Give those hands a quick wash. Y'all watch it. Make sure it don't burn, okay? So while that butter's melting, we're going to put in our honey. Now you're going to want about a half a cup. It can be a little more or a little less. It really don't matter. And that, we're just going to pour that in and sort of eyeball it right there. Yep. Looks like about a half a cup to me. Like I say, really not important how much you put in there. As long as you're sort of kind of close, okay? Now, next thing we got to add to that there, honey and butter, is that half a cup of brown sugar. Oh, yeah. That's going to caramelize while we're baking that ham. And it's going to make it all the more better, trust me. And now we're going to be putting in that apple cider vinegar. Oh, about three tablespoons. That'll give it some, not only the sweetness, but the tartness. Right there. Got that in there. Now, like I say, you could use white vinegar. I don't think you'll know the difference. Next thing we're going to chunk on in that there glaze is we're going to put in some of this here. Good old pure ground black pepper. Half a teaspoon, by the way. That's going to give it some kick. Plus, you might not know. Black pepper is a digestion aid. And it's got many other health benefits. You might want to look that up. I'm just saying. And as always, we're going to add us some garlic powder. And we're going to go with a teaspoon. Thereabouts. Good old garlic powder. That's going to step up the flavor a whole bunch more better. Now, for some ground nutmeg. Oh yeah. About a teaspoon there of it. Like I say, a little more, a little less. Just makes it all the more better. There we go. I think that's about right. Turn our heat down a little bit because we're starting to come to a simmer. And we don't want that. 
Now, in keeping with the holiday treat tradition, we're going to go with a teaspoon of cinnamon. Ooh, yeah. It's starting to smell festive already. Get that heat on down a little bit more. And now it's time for the ground cloves. And we're going to go with a half a teaspoon. If you're not a big fan of that clovey taste, you might want to cut it back to a quarter. But I know. I enjoy cloves. I'm putting in a half, okay? And then lastly, but not leastly, I'm going to put in some yellow prepared mustard. Yep. Like I say, you can put in some of that gray poupon or your favorite uh, mustard. There's one tablespoon right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plop in another tablespoon. Now, if you don't like the tartness and brightness of mustard and that, and don't want to live vicariously, then I would suggest you leave it out or just add a little bit and do a taste test. I'm going to tell you what, it adds a lot to the glaze. A whole nother flavor layer and profile it does. So that's all the ingredients in there. And you just want to keep this right below a simmer. Because we ain't cooking it. We're just heating everything up. We're going to blend it all together, okay? Be right back. we got to wash things off. So, like I said, you don't want to boil this. And you don't want to really put it on a high simmer. You just want to heat it on up through to where that brown sugar incorporates in and that mustard doesn't take long and you want to look at the consistency of your glaze you don't want too thick you don't want too thin now you can use dried mustard too and I have now if I was going to use dried I'd probably start off with a teaspoon of dry. And you just got to keep stirring till all that uh, brown sugar melts until the mustard gets in there and starts to incorporate. Don't got to be perfect. See, cooking isn't about perfect. Cooking is about goodness. It's about the flavor. And many times, it's about the great memories that we've had in the past. And you know what? When the kids were little, times were hard. I always tried to come up with a festive way to take what I had. Sometimes it wasn't a whole lot of money. Raising two children all by myself there for quite some time before I got remarried again. And even then, times could be tough. The wife didn't make a whole lot of money. And that, I made pretty good. It was enough so, you know, with the gardens and all the food we raised here. And of course, we cooked every night right here in the house and that and it's looking like that mustard just ain't gonna want to cooperate and incorporate in as well as I want so as much as I hate to I've got to get out the old whisk now don't worry this uh, non-stick pan I got I've probably had it 20 years it ain't like I'm going to do much damage because I ain't pressing much on it. Should have broke the whisk out from the get-go, shouldn't I? I need to find one of them there fancy plastic ones. 
This won't be the first time this old pot seen this whisk. And there we go. That did it. That got nicely incorporated. And that doesn't look too thin. Doesn't look too thick. And that's going to be real important here in a minute. And you'll see why. Okay? So we're just going to turn that on down so it don't solidify into a big old mess. Now, while this is sitting here, just barely on low to keep it all nice and fluid, we've got to get that ham cut open. And that type of ham will always have a lot of water in it, so we got to drain it off. Let it dry a little bit, super important. We got to get our baking dish there all sprayed right up. Uh, any of y'all who use honey and brown sugar will know, spraying that dish is going to come in real handy here uh, when this thing is cooking on up, okay? So let me get all that done. And we'll get back putting this ham together. Maybe you'll be amazed or surprised. But I guarantee you this. I bet you never seen it done this way before. Trust me on that. Now, here's where the magic comes together. Yes, sir. What you're looking at is you're looking at that ham and that dish right there. You're going to wonder how I'm going to make that honey glazed ham. Now what I've done here is the first two slices, I've, I'm leaving them alone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slice of this ham right here. Now I'm going to lay it right on in there. Just like that. Down on the bottom. Now I'm going to take me some of this delectable glaze and I'm just going to paint that slice I am liberally make sure I get some of that goodness all on that ham and yeah this takes a while surely does okay just like that Try not to lose our brush there. Then we're going to take another piece, keeping track of just how that ham was put together the first time. We'll line her on up there. Try to get it as close as we can to the way it was originally. And we're going to slide some more of that glaze right on top, just like that. Nice and liberally again. And then we're going to go with the third slice. So I think you're starting to get the idea here. Okay? Oh, yeah. And this can get a little messy if you're not real careful. Now, go gently. So you don't be moving your slices around. Try not to tear them none. Just keep on stacking it up. Sort of like snack it. It's sort of like, you know, now I'm all tongue tied. But it's sort of like stacking up cards. There we go. Continuing on we are with it. Here again, trying to keep it as close to its original shape as it was. And you can see why the thickness of your glaze now comes in so important. Don't want it thin and watery. You want it just where it's a touch on the syrupy side.
okay we're just going one slice at a time we are about two dollops per slice does it you gotta be careful when you're brushing it on there or your ham slice will slide on off on you surely will you can see if you're moving at it pretty quick don't care about making too much of a mess you can get right on with the program and like I said the first time I ever did this was it was either 95 or 94 it's hard for me to remember now and that and it was for that Easter and I was poorer than poor. In fact, I'll tell you how poor I was. I was living on about somewhere between $200 and $300 a month. I was recuperating from a very serious car accident. Not of my own making. I'd been rear-ended out in the rural area. And the guy who rear-ended me run a stop sign and uh, hit me from behind at a high rate of speed, which launched me across the highway up an embankment, flipped my car up on top of its roof, it did, and it broke my back, and among a few other things, laid me up in the hospital for several weeks, and that make matters worse I was in between jobs at the time so I didn't have any medical insurance and that living on my savings which wasn't all that much so by the time I paid the hospital bills because you got to do one way or another at least I did felt it was what I had to do only the right thing right and I was left with hardly nothing. Couldn't work. Tried to get on that there disability for a bit. Didn't want it for long. That didn't work either. Any of y'all have ever tried to get on disability, you'll know how problematic that can be. They say you just about got to get an attorney just to get it well I wasn't into all that neither make do what I had so I wound up living in a trailer park which was rather rough and my monthly rent with utilities and you gotta remember this is 94 and 95 was hundred and ten dollars a month which was a good thing but boy that trailer was rough took me two weeks to get it clean livable then I had to make do and what I did because at that time the mother of my children and I were divorced and we shared custody and I'd live pretty slim except when the kids were over saved all my money which wasn't much after rent so I forged a lot for food I surely did and that I didn't get no food stamps my parents helped out a little bit as they could or as I asked They'd have helped out a lot more if I'd have let them know what dire straits I was in. But I didn't. In fact, my father, my papa, got rather ticked off at me for not letting them know just how bad things were. 
said had he known he would have made sure because now papa did have the money but i was always taught you live the hand that's dealt you you do the best you can when daddy got upset later on years when he found out just how rough i was having it he asked me why I didn't say anything, you know, and that he was upset by all that. And I told him, you didn't teach me that way. You taught me that a man makes it on his own, remember? Now, I rarely ever saw my daddy cry, but he cried that day. And every time he thought about it afterwards. And you might wonder why, because he knew, just from talking with others, my dad was never satisfied with what I said. He had to get with other people that knew sort of about my situation. And uh, it just made him so sad. He never would forget it. And he always said, you know, never let that happen again, boy. But, Fortunately for me, that'd be the last accident I'd have in my life. Some of these is slices trying to get away with us. You know, these type of hams, if you want to know the truth about them, they're sort of kind of glued together themselves. So what we're doing ain't much different than the process that they used to put this old ham all together. Now I'm going to tell you what. I've done tasted this glaze. Of course, I'm wearing a lot of it right now. And it is just fabulous. See how that thing's stacking right up? I mean, it's starting to look like one of them there. Fancy store-bought honey-backed hams. In fact, you wouldn't even know if I hadn't have showed you that it wasn't one. Then you'd be wondering where old Mr. Tom was able to get that little bitty honey-backed ham. Yeah, you would be wanting to know. Because like I said, this ain't just poor folk food. This is for us seniors and other people that are living alone or living with their spouse. They still want to enjoy them holidays just like everybody else with family. If they ain't got none, I'll tell you what, makes it all the more better in your life if you can make the holidays as festive as you can. Now you can do the same thing with one of them there turkey loaves, you know, sliced up just like this. In fact, Kentucky Legend makes a turkey sliced turkey like this that I'd enjoy too. Now, I don't put a glaze in between. You know what I put on that one? I make up some of my world famous giblet gravy. I surely do. And that's what I use. Make up my giblet gravy the only difference is I make sure the eggs are really, really minced up fine. In fact, I put them in an old blender sometimes or I just smash the devil out of them with fork until, you know, 
can't even see the pieces anymore. The giblets, i.e. liver and gizzards, are done the same way. You know, and it's flour gravy, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion and stuff. And I use that to glue my turkey loaf together. Comes out mighty fine. Plus, then you got the giblet gravy to pour over when you serve it. And go with your mashed spuds. Oh, yeah. And I got Trixie and Gracie in the floor. Because they know. As does Cleo, Speedy and Spooky, and sometimes Elrod, and Magoo, that old Papa Tom, saved some hand. And there we have it. I know that took a while, but you saw it in real time. Don't take all that. And then we're going to take a little of that and we're just going to put some more on the sides there and when this starts cooking we'll also take it out about halfway through now based on the fact that this was a 2.2 .2 pound sliced ham we're going to set it in a toaster oven yep toaster oven for well you should be about 20 25 minutes pound but i'm going to go an hour and at the halfway point and that's a 350 degree oven i'm going to check the temperature i'm looking for 140 and i'm going to baste it again then i'm going to slide it back in now I'm going to just keep a loose foil tan over it. And I'll show you all, all that here in a bit when we get ready to put it in. And that. So let me uh, wash up a minute. And let me give you a close up and show you. Just what this delectable hand's looking like right now. So y'all, there it is. All stacked on up. Right back the way it come out of the package. Each slice individually glazed in between. You can't get that even in a honey baked tank. They inject their honey glaze into the meat. Then they bake it. And then once it's cool, they go ahead and put it in that there spiral slicer. I've actually seen it done. So now, it's ready to go in the oven except for one other important step that I've learned by experience will help you out okay let me show you that one okay so right now we've got sort of the leaning tower of ham so we got it right here and I forgot to tell you you're gonna need you don't have to but you know if you mishandle this it could just all slide fall apart trust me it won't cook the same won't be as festive looking. So what we're going to do is take these bamboo shish kebab spears. We're going to take one and we're going to run it right down through the center. Yep, till it bottoms out. Just like that. You see that? And then what we're going to do, we're going to take our kitchen shears because that won't quite fit in our uh, Well, I'm going to tell you. Kitchen shears ain't getting it. Let me get something a little bit more industrial, okay? Be right back. So the kitchen shears weren't wanting to cut that bamboo. So we had to go get some cutters. And we're just going to cut that off. Right there at the top. See that? And then we're going to take another one. And we're going to sort of kind of angle it at an angle 
and then we're going to poke it on through all the way to the bottom and then take our cutters snip it off and see it's angled down through there we're going to take this third one and we're going to repeat the same process angle it all the way down through the slices there that sort of shows you the angle we're at here again don't got to be perfect and then we're going to cut it off so between those three it's going to maintain its shape look at that look at that like i told you you ain't ever seen nothing like that in all your born life This thing's ready. Got the oven preheating, and that's going to be in the toaster oven, y'all. Yes, it is. You can see the sticks, those little bamboo skewers, right there in the top. Holding this here, holiday glazed, sliced ham all together. Just like it was store-bought. Like I said, if I would have sent you a picture of this up on the community tab page showed it to you you would have swore it was a small spiral sliced ham I'm thinking because when I've served this to guests before that's exactly what they thought until they saw me plating it on up so let's let that oven preheat we'll get her slid on in there that's a 350 degree preheated oven We'll check it at 30 minutes, rebaste it, and go from there. Okay? Gracie, you waiting for some ham? Got old tricks over there. She's fast asleep. You better leave her alone or she'll swat you again. You got cut mark above your eye. Yeah, they'll teach you to mess with the old girl, won't it? I know, baby. You just want to play, and Trixie don't. Nope. Trix, she had her afternoon meal, and she's zonked on out. But I do know what y'all are waiting for. Ham! Well, it's coming this evening as a special treat. Okay? Hey, Papa got to get this here ham in the oven, okay? This is Papa's ham. Your ham slices are in the fridge. So the oven's up to temp. Now the only thing left to do is get us a foil tent on it. Now we don't want to tent it tightly. We're going to tent it. And then we're going to place it in that toaster oven at 350. And we'll check it 30 minutes and rebase the outside there. And give it a preliminary temperature check the old school thermometer and we'll retent and put it back in for another 30 I'm thinking okay so let me get some of that there snazzy silicone Reynolds wrap now if y'all ain't found out about this stuff yet this is the Reynolds wrap non-stick Heavy duty. Woo. I don't know who invented it. Man or woman. The boy. They deserve some credit. Now it is a little pricey. All that being said. And I use it on a rare occasion. But when I don't want something to stick, and you put it down, this side down, and it tells you right on non-stick side. So we're just going to do a loose tent right over it. Nothing tight. Because when we want to get her all nice and brown and crispy on the outside, we'll take it off. See, it's loose, okay? So let me get this in the toaster oven, and I'll show you what we got, okay? Watch out, Trix. Yep. 
gonna be tight in that toaster oven, but I think we can do it. Okay, y'all. Got her in the toaster oven there. Had plenty of clearance. That little uh, nine by nine baking dish. Plenty on the top there. So stacking it up wasn't a problem. Got us about an inch or so on the sides. Now we're gonna have to be careful getting it out. Cause it's hot. And it's about four pounds of that glass dish. But we're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and we'll take her out. Give her a temperature check and a reglaze. Stick it back in. So let's close her all up and go watch some YouTube, okay? So y'all the timer went off, been in there for 30 minutes. Let's uncover this here bad boy. Woo! It's just bubbling away. Still holding together. See right there? Now, let's give it a little temp check. See where we're at. We're just going to take our little thermometer. Poke her down through the middle there. See what the temperature is. So that's going to let us know what we got to do. Because we want to be around 130, 140. Now we're not cooking. We're just reheating. There you have it. As you can see, it's coming up on 100 degrees. So it's going to take a little bit longer. So I'm thinking we're going to put it in there for another 30. And that, and that should be about right. Because it was probably 70 degrees when we stuck it in there. You know, room temp by the time we finished putting it all together and everything. Then, we'll untent and let it crust up for 15 minutes. And I think it'll be just perfect. So, I'm going to give this a quick reglaze. And uh, get her back on in that oven, okay? And then we'll be back when we're taking it out again. Okay? Ooh, our glaze is getting a little thick here. Let's just give it a quick reglaze on the outside. Because that glaze is going to caramelize as this continues to cook. Oh, yeah. This is going to be delicious. There we have it. I'll just get her all uh, retented. Uh-oh, better take out that there uh, thermometer. That sort of end bad. Mm. We'll put this on it back over it real quickly. Nothing fancy again. Ooh, the thing is hot. We'll get her back in that oven for another 30. Now, I won't show you again. So after we've uncovered and got it back out. When it's all nice and finished, okay? Too hard getting it in and out. Woo, yeah, this is hot. Set it up there on the counter. Get that oven closed back up. Well, it's been in there for another 30 minutes. Take a little tan off it. Oh, my Lord. Look at that thing. It ain't going to take much to get crusty, is it? Well, let's give her another stick with the old thermometer. See where we're at now. Oh, yeah. Yep. She's right where we need her. Let me show you. See right there? Yep, it's almost 150. Yep, but that'd be fine too. So what we're going to do, we're just going to set it in there, uncovered, for a few minutes, and then we'll shut the oven off to keep the temperature while we get our couple of humble sides ready. Ain't gonna be nothing special. Trust me that. 
just poor folk country food with our poor folk country glazed ham holiday ham it is so let me set it back on in there get them sides going and we'll be back well y'all we got it out of the oven now we let it brown up just a touch more and I'm gonna sneak a slice off here with a fork let it cool for a minute see if I can get these sticks out without destroying it at least these two sideways ones that I think I'll leave that center one in it'll be easy enough with the pork to get that so I got a piece on a little paper plate right here you see it so only thing is I'm sure it's cool enough now oh yep plenty tender let's see what this bad boy tastes like okay mm. well y'all Let's give it a taste test and see if we turn this cheap little old sliced ham into a holiday ham. Mm. Oh yeah. Hmm. Now Grant, it's not a honey baked ham. But for just a little old cheap Kentucky legend, sliced ham. Didn't cost me much, a few dollars. It is mighty fine. I love it. And this will go great for dinners. And even though it was only 2.2 .2 pounds, that's enough for a few days for old Mr. Tom. And I can use it at lunch to make sandwiches. And it's going to make some fine ones. And I can even dice it up. Reheat it for breakfast with some, maybe some scrambled eggs or fried eggs too. Yes, I can. Hmm. Sorry to eat in front of me. Oh, yeah. You know, the funny part about that glaze is I can taste every bit of it. I can taste the honey, brown sugar, sweetness. Brown sugar has got its own little flavor profile going there. I can just catch that touch of apple cider vinegar as well as that mustard. And just a little bit of peppery bite to it. Yep. This is the winner. Mm. Well, this ain't going to stick around long. But let's just say, it's just you out there. Easter comes upon you at Christmas and you want to enjoy some ham. You're low on your money. Or you just don't want to buy a great big one and eat leftovers for days, if not a couple weeks. Or freeze it. Can you never better as good as it was after it's frozen? I don't care what they say. It's okay. I've done it. This is the way to go. This is the ticket. Unless you can get your butcher to carve you up a big ham in the usable sizes. Uh, I used to be able to do that. Maybe you can too. So now all I've got to do is plate up my meal. Once we get that all done up, we'll bring you on back and show you the final meal tonight here at Deep South Bay. Well, y'all, got it all plated up. Right there it is. Look at those slices of that poor Pope holiday ham. Honey and mustard glazed. Oh, yeah. Along with some good old English green peas, some mashed potatoes with butter, and of course, my world famous Pulpo 
garlic toast with herbs. Oh yeah. Now to me, that's a meal fit for a king. And I wouldn't mind serving it to any of y'all. I don't think I get too many complaints. But there you have it. And like I said, if you're a little slim on your money one holiday and you're hankering for some ham to brighten your spirits up or maybe your little family, maybe it's just you, your husband, or you and your children, yeah, I'd suggest you give it a try. And even not, this will more than gladly feed a family of four, no problem. Yes, sir, because that's how much I got left. You know, I'm going to get many meals out of it, many sandwiches, and I'm ever so thankful. And I got to sit down and get eating on this before it gets cold. Well, y'all, you seen me make it. The pole poke, holiday ham. For when you're struggling and times are hard. I do hope this video finds y'all well and safe and happy in your homes with your family, friends, and loved ones too. And as always, may God bless each and every one of you, your families, and your friends and loved ones. Till we see you on the next video. And as always, Trix and Gracie, they've already conked on out. And so has Cleo, Elrod, Magoo, Speedy, and Spooky. Because it's 7 30. They've had their meal. They always get fed before Papa. So, y'all, take care. Stay safe. And goodbye for now. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, this always takes too long when you're doing a video. Time to sit down at the desk, eat, watch some YouTube, and be thankful. Yep.